Welcome to Get Teched. My name's Elizabeth. I hope you aren't claustrophobic because today we're getting into some tight spaces, your crawl space. I'm going to show you how to monitor temperature and humidity in your crawl space so you can avoid mold, wood rot, and everything else that can go wrong. Before we get started, please subscribe to this channel so we can continue to bring you these wonderful videos. Let's talk about crawl spaces. Every home has one. They can be dark and dirty and scary, but they also can be I, for one, would never venture in there, but they're pretty important. The health of your home can be dependent on the health of your crawl space. If your crawl space is hot and moist, it can lead to things like wood rot, insect problems, and mold. So how do you monitor your crawl space without having to go in there all the time? That's what we're here for. I'm going to show you how to remotely monitor the temperature and humidity in your crawl space. Here's how your crawl space should work. If you have a newer home, you likely have a vented crawl space. There's also encapsulated and conditioned crawl spaces. So with this type of crawl space, there are vents all around your house that let outside air circulate into your crawl space to help dry out any condensation that may form. There is a crawl space vapor barrier installed which covers the entire floor. This barrier keeps moisture in the soil from being absorbed into everything in your crawl space, including your floor joists. If everything works like it should, the crawl space should stay dry and mold free. What we need to monitor is the outside temperature, the crawl space temperature, and the crawl space humidity. These three things all affect the health of your crawl space. Here's what you'll need for this project. You're gonna need a power outlet or extension cord for your crawl space. You're going to need Wi-Fi in your house, particularly it should reach your crawl space. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi. You can use a 3 or a 4 or a 0W or a 0WH. I'm going to be using a 0WH for this project. You're also going to need a power supply for your Pi and an SD card. You'll need a BME 280 sensor for temperature and humidity, and you'll need female to female jumper wires. I also have a wireless keyboard and a monitor that I use to set up all my pies. Once you have your pie set up and running, you won't need to have these connected anymore. The Raspberry Pi Zero WH is one of the cheaper options for the pies. It does everything you need it to do, and it comes with a pre-soldered header. If you just get the Zero W, you're gonna have to solder that on yourself. The BME 280 sensor also requires you to solder on a four pin header. You can buy a pre-soldered version if you'd like. We experimented with the DHT22 sensor, but we found that the BME280 had far more accurate and consistent humidity readings. That's all the hardware that you'll need for this project. As for software, you'll need Raspberry Pi OS, Python script to read the sensors and send the data, and a data visualization tool to display your data. We will be using initial state, but you can use any data visualization any data visualization tool that you want. You can replace initial state with another web service or build your own. Otherwise, initial state offers a free student tier for anyone with an active EDU email address. Our individual tiers start at $9.99 per month and all the tiers come with a 14 day free trial. Initial state allows you to easily create dashboards, store historical data, and send alerts. Let's start by connecting our hardware. The BME280 sensor has four pins that will connect to your Raspberry Pi. It has V in, which will connect to pin one on your Pi, which is 3.3 volts. It has a ground pin, which will connect to pin six, which is ground on your Pi. It has an SCL pin, which will connect to SCL on your Pi, which is pin five, and SDA, which will connect to pin three on your Pi, which is SDA. And voila, it's connected. Now for the software piece. I'll assume that you have your Raspberry Pi up and running with Raspberry Pi OS and it's connected to Wi-Fi. If not, you can find the instructions to do that in the tutorial. The link is in the video description. To use the BME280 sensor, you're going to need to enable I squared C on your Raspberry Pi. In your terminal, type sudo raspi-config. Select five interfacing options. Select yes to enable I squared C. Select finish to save and exit. 
Now, to test that I score C is enabled, what you need to do is go into the, your command prompt and type sudo i2c detect dash y1. You'll get a response that should show you your sensor at an address. If you don't see an address, check your wiring, make sure I score C is enabled, and reboot your Raspberry Pi. There are two Python modules you'll need to install. One to communicate with the BME280 sensor and one to send the data to initial state. So go to your command prompt and type in sudo pip install rpi.bme280. Once that's installed, the next one you're going to type in is sudo pip install isstreamer. You'll find a Python script for reading and sending temperature and humidity data in the tutorial link in the video description. The script reads and sends data every 10 minutes. So create a script called crawlspace by typing nano crawlspace.py. This will open the text editor and you can copy and paste the script from the tutorial into the text editor. This is best done by SSHing into your Pi from your computer. Lines seven through 12 of the script are all changeable. Line seven is your sensor location name. Line eight is the bucket name. Line nine is the bucket key. Line 10 is the access key, which you can find by going to your initial state account in my settings. Line 11 is how many minutes between reading the sensor, and line 12 is if you want metric units or not. So save all your changes using Control X, hit Y for yes, and then enter to exit. Once you've exited, type python crawlspace.py to run the script. If you are using a different data visualization tool, you can change this script to work for you. With your script up and running, go to initial state to view your data. You should see temperature and humidity as line graphs. Now is the fun part. You can add a background image to your dashboard. You can add summary tiles. You can change the temperature to a thermometer. You can change the humidity to a liquid level gauge. Endless options for customization. You're going to want to add outside weather data to your dashboard. You can do this without any code or Raspberry Pi. We'll stream the data from the weather stack integration in the initial state integration marketplace. So you can access the marketplace from your initial state homepage, go to the weather stack integration and click begin setup. You'll name this integration. You're going to enter your zip code or your coordinates of the location of your house. You're going to select to send the data to an existing bucket, which is your crawl space bucket. Instead of sending all the data from the integration to this bucket, because there's a lot of information you can send, let's just select temperature and humidity. Click start integration and go to your crawl space bucket to see the new data. You'll see outside temperature and humidity that you can now make into whatever tile types you want. Now that we have all the data, you're going to want to set alerts on this data so you know if the humidity or temperature gets too high. Go to your bucket settings, go to the triggers tab, click create new trigger, enter the name of the signal that you want to monitor in the stream key field, choose the greater than operator, and enter the max threshold in the value field. A good example of what you would want to set is if the humidity is greater than 80%. Enter the phone number or email address that you want to receive the alert at and click done at the bottom when you're finished. You'll receive a text or email if your threshold is exceeded. You've tested the script, the dashboard is designed, and now you want your Pi to continuously run without you. You'll want the Python script to start anytime your Pi might reboot in case of a power outage. To do this, Go to your terminal window and type in crontab-e. If this is your first time to run crontab, it's going to ask you which text editor you want to use. For example, I chose the nano editor. Add the following line to the bottom of the crontab text file and then save and exit. At reboot no hub python slash home slash pi slash bme280 slash crawlspace.py ampersand. You'll need to specify the exact directory where you have your file stored. Mine is obviously stored in a folder called BME280. NoHub stands for no hangup and it allows you to create a process that runs in the background without stopping even when your terminal is closed. It is also a very good idea 
to send the IP address of your Pi into your dashboard so that you can SSH into your Pi at any point. You can easily do this with our Pi process tutorial link in the video description. I recommend hanging your Pi from a floor joist instead of leaving it on the ground to avoid any potential water damage. Now that your Pi is running and installed, here's what you should be looking out for. Mold can grow at any humidity greater than 70% for prolonged periods of time. So if you have a high temperature and a high humidity in your crawl space, that's a recipe for mold and rot. So collect your data for a few months, see what your trends are, and then make adjustments as needed. You now have a crawl space monitor and you don't have to go back in there for a while. Thank goodness. If you enjoyed this tutorial, like this video and subscribe to our channel. Show us your crawlspace projects on Twitter. And until next time, 